Pasan po natin ang ating Biblia sa mga gawa, Kapitulo 9, verse 1 hanggang sa 5. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 hanggang sa 5. And I have already found an appropriate topic for our afternoon service. As you know very well, I am preaching topical sermons on... Um, I'm preaching topical sermons every Sunday afternoon and these messages come from books and authors na nakikita natin na angkop sa ating pangangailangan bilang isang iglesia. And just like the Sovereign Grace Church of uh, Manila right now, Kila Pastor Rene Maramara, they are now having a series on Respectable Sins by Bridges. But... I have resolved to have this series from Martin Lloyd-Jones na ating pag-aaralan uh, 12 series of messages from Lloyd-Jones na nakikita ko na angkop sa ating pangangailangan dito sa ating church and we will be having that starting today sa ating panghapon na panambahan. Acts chapter 9 verses 1 hanggang sa Five. Samantala si Saulo na may masidhing pagbabanta ng kamatayan laban sa mga alagad ng Panginoon ay pumunta sa pinakapunong pari. Humingi siya sa pinakapunong pari ng mga sulat para sa mga sinagoga sa Damasco upang kung siya ay makatagpo ng sinumang kabilang sa daan, mga lalaki o mga babae, ay dadalhin niya silang nakagapos sa Jerusalem. Sa kanyang paglalakbay, dumating siya sa malapit sa Damasco, biglang kumislap sa palibot niya ang isang liwanag mula sa langit. Bumagsak siya sa lupa at nakarinig ng isang tinig na sa kanyay nagsasabi, Saulo, Saulo, bakit mo ako inuusig? Sinabi niya, Sino ka, Panginoon? At siya'y sumagot, Ako si Jesus na iyong inuusig. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of His Word. Now, the purpose of our new series of study this afternoon is that we may understand some of the first elementary principles with regards to the Christian life. Especially kung papaano ang isang tao ay nagiging Christian. At sinabi ni Apostle Paul, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Meaning to say, kung ano po ang nangyari kay Apostle Paul, his life is a pattern or, ex- or an example for all believers. Buksan po natin ang 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. Ano po ang sinabi ni Pablo kay Timoteo? 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 verses 16 hanggang sa 17, ang sabi dito, Ngunit dahil dito, uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 12 brother, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 hanggang sa 16, Nagpapasalamat ako sa kanya na nagpapalakas sa akin kay Kristo Jesus na Panginoon natin sapagkat ako'y itinuring niyang tapat na ako'y inilagay sa paglilingkod sa kanya. Kahit na noong una ako'y isang lapastangan, manguusig, at mangaalipusta, gayon may kinahabagan ako sapagkat sa kamangmangan ay ginawa ko iyon sa kawalan ng pananampalataya. At labis na sumagana sa akin ang biyaya ng ating Panginoon na may pananampalataya at pag-ibig na na kay Kristo. Tapat ang salita at nararapat tanggapin ng lubos na si Kristo Jesus ay pumarito sa sanlibutan upang iligtas ang mga makasalanan na ako ang pangunahin sa mga ito. Ngunit dahil dito, nakatanggap ako ng habag upang sa akin na pangunahin ay maipapahayag ni Heso Kristo ang kanyang sakdal na pagtitiis bilang halimbawa sa mga sumasampalataya sa kanya tungo sa buhay na walang hanggan. So the Apostle Paul says that his life serves as a pat- pattern or example for the believers to follow. 
Now, who is the Apostle Paul? Here is this man, branded by many theologians as the great apostle. He is amazing, astounding personality, outstanding servant of God. That was the Apostle Paul. But, there was once a time in his life na hindi siya ganun. At binanggit dito, siya ay lapastangan. He was a blasphemer. He was a persecutor. He was injurious. And according to verse 1 of our text in Acts chapter 9, he was breathing out threatening and slaughter. He hated the Lord Jesus Christ so much. He hated Christianity so much. He hated Christians so much. And damaging them and hating them gave him a feeling of delight and satisfaction. Breathing out threatening and slaughter. That was the Apostle Paul. That was his condition prior to the earlier description that I gave you. That he was an outstanding man, a great servant of God. Now, this was, this was in, fight, in spite of the fact, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, that the Apostle Paul was not ignorant of Jesus. He was not ignorant of Jesus. Alam niyang patungkol kay Jesus, narinig niya bilang pariseyo, Paul was Saul, was, an, uh, was a Pharisee. Narinig niyang patungkol kay Jesus about, bilang isang pariseyo. He had heard about him, he knew the message of Christianity. Kaya nga sinabi niya, I had to fight contrary to myself. It wasn't an issue of ignorance of the story of Christianity. Paul was not ignorant. He knew it. Andun din siya. Nung nagsalita si Esteban ng napakahabang sermon, Paul was listening. He heard the address of Stephen. Nakita din niya ang mukha ni Esteban na nagningning katulad ng mukha ng isang anghel. At nakita din ni Saulo si Esteban na pinagbabato hanggang sa siya ay namatay. Paul was aware of all these things. And yet, he was still breathing out threats and murder and slaughter. A bitter person. Zealous for the cause of Judaism. At sinabi din niya, na persuaded siya na siya ay naglingkod sa Diyos sa lahat ng kanyang ginagawa by trying to exterminate Christianity. And there was the Apostle Paul, a non-Christian, a non-Christian, an unbeliever. And later, he became a Christian. He became a believer. So, ano ang dahilan kung bakit hindi siya Christian? Sinabi naman niya sa binasa natin sa 1 Timothy, generally, he acted in ignorance and unbelief. Ignorance about his real condition before God. But not ignorant of the fact. Because he knew about Jesus Christ. He knew all of the events in Jerusalem at that time. But then, but then si Apostle Paul, sinabi niya sa Timoteo, I did, it in, uh, I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Now, papaano siya nabago from that position of unbelief to another position of a faithful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ? How did it happen? And to make it more personal, Para sa bawat isa sa atin, if you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, how did it happen na dati ikaw ay hindi mananampalataya, pero anong nangyari na humantong sa kinatatayuan mo ngayon? Now in the case of the Apostle Paul, from the awful blasphemy and persecution to his astounding condition as a servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun ang ating sasagutin sa hapong ito. And I'm giving you a warning. There are seven parts of our sermon. But do not ever think that these seven parts will be discussed. 20 minutes for each part. And that makes it one hour and 40 minutes. Hindi po. Tayo muna ay manalangin. 
Salamat po Panginoon sa hapong ito. Buksan po ninyo ang aming mga mata nang mas ma-search ma- din namin ang aming mga sarili kung kami ba talaga ay tunay na convert. Naniniwala po kami nang nangyari kay Apostle Paul ay nangyayari sa lahat ng mga dinadala ninyo sa paana ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Our, our conversion may not be as dramatic as the Apostle Paul's was, but meron kaming similar na karanasan sa Kanya. At naway makita din ito ng mga kaibigan namin na wala pa kay Kristo upang naisin nila na maging katulad sa lahat ng mga iniligtas ninyo sa pamamagitan ng inyong biyaya. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ano nangyari? Mula sa isang taga-usig, mula sa isang blasphemer, ano po ang nangyari? Bakit siya naging matapat na lingkod ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo? Well, first and foremost, there was the intervention of God. There was the intervention of God nang himasok po ang ating Panginoon. He almost succeeded sa kanyang career. Ano ang kanyang career? I-exterminate ang Christianity. Nakatanggap na siya ng authority mula sa mga mga Jewish leaders upang pumunta sa Damascus at hulihin, dakpin ang mga mananampalataya kay Kristo. Hindi nag-intervene ang Panginoon Nung malapit pa siya sa Jerusalem, kaalis pa lang niya. Hindi rin nag-intervene ang Panginoon sa kalagitnaan ng kanyang paglalakbay from Jerusalem to Damascus. Ang sinasabi ng ating teksto, when he was about to enter the city, in other words, God is able to intervene even in the last minute. God is able to intervene. Kaya, kaya nga, sinishera natin ang Ibanghelyo, yung mga taong may serious condition. Yung sinasabi nating malapit ng mamamatay, kahit pa kuma at hindi na nakaka-respond, pinupuntahan natin at binabahaginan ng Ibanghelyo because God is able to intervene even in the last minute. Now Paul almost succeeded. He came near Damascus but then suddenly God foiled his plan not for his worst but for his betterment. He came near Damascus and suddenly the Lord intervened. And I say, my dear brethren, God intervenes. Now, i-apply natin ito in an experimental sense. The Lord always intervenes in the lives of His elect. Yung kanyang mga pinili, even before the foundation of the world, ang Panginoon po ay nag intervene Kung ikaw ay suga pa, sa kasalanan mo, lumalangway ka sa kasalanan mo. And even if you raise your fist against God, if you are an elect of God, the Lord is able to intervene even if you are at the height of your sin and unbelief. Now, maring itanong, itanong mo sa sarili mo, Pastor, how do I know na ang Panginoon ay nag-intervene sa akin? How do I know? Buti na lang sana kung katulad ako kay Apostle Paul na nakakita ng, ng maliwanag, liwanag mula sa langit. E wala akong ganoong dramatic experience. How do I know that the Lord has intervened in my life? Well, generally speaking, how do you know that the Lord has indeed intervened in your life? Well, you become aware of the fact that something is happening to you. Meron kang awareness na meron talagang nangyayari sa iyo. Maring hindi dramatic katulad ni Apostle Paul, pero aware ka na dati ang kasalanan na ini-enjoy mo, all of the sudden nakikita mo ang kapangitan ng kasalanan at nag-uumpisa ka ng nabagabag. You are aware that God is dealing with you because of your sin. Hindi katulad ang karanasan natin ni Apostle Paul, katulad naman ng isang kwarto na madilim na madilim, madilim na madilim, aware tayo sa darkness of the room, and then sinindihan yung bumbilya, we are aware that something has happened dahil meron ng liwanag. Well, maaaring ang, ang kwento ng buhay mo ay hindi bumbilya, kundi kandila. Kahit kandila yan, hindi katulad, hindi dramatic as the bulb is, kahit kandila yan, but you are aware that something is happening. Perhaps, dati ay inaayawan mo ang Bible study, ngayon aware ka na. 
Hinahanap mo na ang salita ng Diyos. Dati ay hindi talaga inaanto ka kapag sermon. Pero ngayon, all of the sudden, you are aware that God, uh, that something is happening. Now, my dear brethren, that is one of the examples of God's intervention. You are conscious that something is taking place. And this is very much important, my dear brethren, because it's always the way God deals with us. Regeneration is a necessity. Ang taong patay sa kaniyang kasalanan, wala talagang spark. Wala talagang interest. Walang inclination sa salita ng Panginoon. Naghihintay lang yan kung kailan matatapos ang, ang message. Ang kahaba-habang message ng pastor, naghihintay lang yan. Nakaupo lang yan. There is no spark. There is no interest whatsoever. And even maaring nami-memorize na niya yung pattern ng sermon, introduction, body, and conclusion. But then all of the sudden, he is aware that something is taking place in his life. He becomes so interested in the Word of God. He is now anticipating for the preaching of the Gospel. And for the first time in the life of the Apostle Paul, tinawag siya, ng ating Panginoon sa kanyang pangalan, Saul, Saul, meaning to say, there is now this personal element. It is a man becoming conscious of the fact that he is now the object of God's dealing and no longer as the subject. Uh, dati, tinuring ni Pablo, ni Saulo, uh, dating Saulo, ang Christianity as subject of his curiosity, subject of his interest, subject of his uh, drive na kanyang ma-eradicate. But then all of the sudden, he feels that he is now the object of God's direct dealing. Becoming a Christian, my dear brethren, means a divine encounter. You encounter the true and living God. You encounter the holy God na dati ang pagtingin mo sa Panginoon is slightly higher than yourself. Slightly higher than yourself, perhaps limited sa fact nga siya yung Diyos na tagapaglikha. Pero yung Diyos na hari, may absolute claim over your, over your life. Ngayon, biglang namulat ka sa katotohanan iyan na dati ay hindi mo pinapansin. Yes, narinig mo rin dati that Christ is King. Pero ngayon ay nakita mo na meron ka talagang divine encounter. A man encountering God. And God encountering man. Yun ang nangyari kay Apostle Paul. A meeting takes place. And prior to your... When you became a Christian, when the Lord set His eyes on you, at ikaw ay tumugon sa Ibanghelyo in a saving way, you know that a meeting takes place. There's the relationship, I, you, you, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? There is I, you relationship. That's, a, that's, that's an essence of Christianity, my dear friends. For the first time in the life of the Apostle Paul, he became conscious that he was being directly addressed by God. Before that, it was he who talked for so long. Hmm. Kailangan masecure ko itong letter na ito, itong permission galing sa Jewish authorities. It was he who talked and who planned for so long. But now, the Lord Jesus Christ is now addressing him and speaking to him personally. It was now he who was being addressed to and dealt with. Saul, Saul. Dumating sa kanya ang boses ng ating Panginoon. Hindi na, hindi na yung tipong si Saulo ang tumitingin, tinitimbang niya ang Christianity versus Judaism. Pero nakita ni Saulo, he is now being examined by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is now the object, no longer the subject. And it is no longer a matter of my being interested in religion or Christianity or investigating it from a detached external position. May mga tao na parang in investigator sa different religion. Ah, yung religion, ganyan lang yan eh. Psychological lang yan. Yung kanilang right 
lobe ng kanilang brain, uh, mukhang namamaga, at yun ang right lobe, yun yung uh, concerned sa mga kinagigiliwan, kinahuhumalingan. So yung iba, kung ang kanilang right lobe ay nakafocus sa kanilang katawan, kaya nga, pinapa-enhance nila ang kanilang pisngi, ang kanilang cheekbone, doon na ang kanilang attention. Yung iba naman ay inilalagay nila sa religion. Kaya, in order to have a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction, they talk about religion, they talk about philosophy from a detached point of view. Na parang sila yung nag evaluate sila yung nag examine Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ appears to us in a saving way, nakikita natin that God is dealing personally with us, with our sins. And just figure out what was in the mind of Paul as he left Jerusalem for Damascus. Let us figure out. Let, uh, let us try to put ourselves into the shoes of the Apostle Paul. He was addressing Christianity and Judaism from an external point of view, detached. Dito ako ipinanganak. I will defend it. And Christianity is just a baby religion. It's an intrusion to the glorious splendor of Judaism. So that was, in, that was what was in the mind of the Apostle Paul when he left Jerusalem and suddenly when he entered the city or when he was about to enter the city of Damascus, the Lord arrested him. The Lord apprehended him. And he's now being directly addressed. And this personal element becomes tremendously prominent and the whole position of this detachment disappears. Now next, pangalawang punto, anong nangyari kay Pablo? Instead of talking, di ba ang sinabi sa verse 1 ng ating teksto, he, he was breathing. So he was talking. Talagang, paano ba sinabi sa verse 1? Samantala si Saulo ay may masidhing pagbabanta ng kamatayan laban sa mga alagad ng Panginoon ay pumunta sa pinakapunong pare pag may sinabing may masidhing pagbabanta. Ginagamit niya ang kanyang bibig, humanda kayo sa akin. So instead of talking and expressing his opinions, right now, Nung inaresto siya ng Panginoon, he was made to listen. He was made to listen. Now, para sa mga wala pa sa Panginoon, maring sinasabi ninyo na, alam ko naman, Pastor, na ang Biblia ay salita ng Panginoon. Galing yan sa kanya. Pero, huwag mo nalang akong pangaralan yan kasi kung ano nang kinagisnan ko, ito, ito na yung sa akin. Huwag, huwag mo na, huwag, huwag mo na. Alam ko na salita yan ng Panginoon. Pero, Huwag mo nang, ano, huwag ka nang mag-spend ng time sa akin. Mayroon pag iba na mas nangangailangan. Uh, kung ano itong nakagisnan ko, yun na yun. Yun ang nangyari kay Pablo. From the point of view of expressing his opinion, and now the Apostle Paul is made to listen. And these are the things na nangyayari sa ating buhay when we become Christians. You think that you know you think that you know. Si Apostle Paul, sabi niya, he, he thought that he was alive. He thought that he was knowledgeable of the law. But when he was made to listen, siya po ay namatay. Y- y- sabihin, sabihin niya, when I heard the law, I became dead. Of course, he knew the law intellectually. Pero nung narinig niya, in a personal way, you shall not covet. All of the sudden, he found himself in the position of listening. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And you think that you know your spirituality? Nakala mo na alam mo ang mga bagay-bagay? Maring meron kang evaluation, assessment, one religion to another, one point of view to another, and you talk, you express your opinion you become an expert evaluator of what you consider as your truth. And then all of the sudden, you are made to listen. Ang, 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 ang batas ng Diyos ay nag-confront sa'yo at hindi mo pwedeng takpan ang tenga mo dahil ang salita ng Panginoon na mas matalas pa sa espada na, na dalawang talim ay tumagos na sa puso at isipan mo. Now, ang tanong dito, kaibigan, 
Dumating ka na ba sa punto sa buhay mo na sinugatan ka talaga ng salita ng Diyos? May mga tao na may mga tao na matitiis daw nila yung isang daang bugbog pero hindi nila matitiis yung masakit na pananalita. May mga ganun eh. Ang tanong dito kay Bigan, sinugatan ka na ba ng salita ng Diyos? Have you been personally addressed by God? Have your sins been exposed by God so that you are forced to listen to God's apprehension by the preaching of the gospel? So Saul became silent. Walang siyang magagawa. Saul, Saul, why have you persecuted me? By the law comes the knowledge of sin. And when the law declares that you are a sinner guilty in the sight of God, ano pa bang may kakatwiran mo? Kaibigan, yung pangangatwiran, isang palatandaan yan ng walang pag-amin sa kasalanan. Di ba? Kapag pinapakinukorek mo ang isang tao, nangangatwiran siya palagi, ibig sabihin, walang repentance, walang pag-amin sa kasalanan. And he keeps on talking. He is not listening. His heart is hard and callous. But oh, ang mangyayari sa tunay na niligtas ng Panginoon is mapipilitan siyang makinig sa confrontation ng batas ng Diyos. You are a sinner and the wrath of God abides upon you. Have you been personally addressed by God, my dear brethren? Saul became silent and we too became silent when we have been confronted by the law of God and rendered us guilty before God. For the first time sa buhay ni Apostle Paul, dumating ang mga bagay na ito sa kanya, itong mga personal concerns. People often act as personal judge. Parang sila yung nagja-judge. Ah, ganito, ganyan. Ganito, yung palagay ko, pananaw ko. Pero kung dumating ang salita ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay, ay all of his expertise ay mawawala. Christianity is first and foremost, mga kapatid, personal matter. Christianity is about you, about your life, about your destiny, about your immortal soul. Hindi ka parang palaka na pagmamamatay na ay wala na. Pero ikaw ay isang immortal ang kaluluwa mo. Right after death, there is resurrection. There is judgment. The gospel is a personal matter. It speaks to us one by one. I, you, I, you. Hindi ka pwedeng maliligtas by family, by country, or by clan. May mga taong nag-iisip na kung Christian ang parents, Christian din siya. Kung baga, by family, by clan, ang salvation... Sinungaling po yan mula sa kaaway, mula kay satanas. It's an individual matter. It's a very personal matter. And up to this point, mga kapatid, si Apostle Paul ay advocate of Judaism. We are all advocates of something. We were all advocates of something prior to our con- conversion. We were all advocates. Meron tayong mga pananaw, meron tayong mga worldly philosophies, katulad ng siguro, naunawaan naman siguro ng Panginoon ang aking, ang aking kaluluwa. Hindi naman ako masyadong makasalanan. Totoo, hindi ako nagsisimba, pero nagtatrabaho naman ako eh para sa aking family. Di ba, kalooban ng Panginoon na mapakain ko ang aking family. We justify. Meron tayong ina-advocate prior to our conversion. We take up a case, and we, when we take up a case, we are not involved. Nilalabas natin ang ating sarili mula sa situation, katulad ng Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman. Nung nakita niya na medyo personal ng dealing sa kanya, nag-open up siya ng controversial issue between the Jews and the Samaritans. Pero anong ginawa ni Jesus? Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. But the Jews say that 
The worship is in Jerusalem. So, dahil na-touch yung kanyang personal matter, uh, nag, nag-shift siya sa more controversial and uh, general one na nilabas niya ang kanyang sarili. Pero sinabi pa rin ang Panginoon sa kanya, ang kanyang name. You are an immoral woman. You've had five husbands and the one that you have now is not your husband. Uh, madaling nag-shift ang babae into something that was impersonal. Yung controversy going on between the Jews and the Samaritans. And people are usually like that. But when the Lord reaches out to you in a saving way, you have to listen to the confrontation of the law. You have to listen to the confrontation of God. And you have to accept the fact that God is now dealing you because of your sin. Wala pong converted na wala talagang personal dealing na nangyari sa kanyang buhay galing sa Panginoon. Ano ang pangatlo? Ano ang next step? May nangyari kay Pablo na dawning consciousness. It's not what I think of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang pananaw ni Pablo kay Jesus ay impostor si Jesus or he did not believe in him. Ang nangyayari ngayon, what the Lord thinks of me. So first, si Pablo ay merong opinion concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Yung mga tao sa mundo ay may mga opinion concerning Jesus na siya ay taluna na Diyos. Bakit ganito, ganyan? And Paul, in the case of Paul, he wasn't slow in expressing his opinion about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was very vocal. He was very sure of his opinion of the Lord Jesus Christ. But right now, all of the sudden, the whole thing became reversed. At nakita niya na si Kristo pala ang merong opinion sa kanya. Paul, why are you persecuting me? And in chapter 25 ng Acts, ng Book of Acts, ang sinabi ni Pablo, mahi, uh, ang sinabi ng Panginoon, mahirap, ano sa Tagalog yung kick? Ah, mahirap sumikad sa mga bagay na matutulis. Kasi kung si Karan, si, si sikad tayo sa, <laughs> mahirap ng Tagalog, sa bagay, sisipa tayo sa bagay na matutulis, tayo ay masasaktan. Hmm. Tayo ay masasaktan. In other words, Paul had an opinion about the Lord Jesus Christ. But now, he was confronted by Christ's not opinion, but pronouncement against him. Judgment is coming upon you, Saul, if you will not repent. Mahirap sumikad sa bagay na matutulis. And you have opinion about me that I am nothing, but now I am the judge. Why are you persecuting me? Mahirap sumikad sa bagay na matutulis. So there is this threat of judgment. Saul, Saul. Now, kaibigan, kumusta ang kaluluwa mo? Inaddress ka na ba ng Panginoon sa'yo? Uh, ng Panginoon at pinakita ng Panginoon sa'yo? Na kung hindi ikaw sumuko sa Kanya, ay ang Panginoon ay hindi talunan. May paghahatol. You cannot be a Christian without that. It's impossible, my dear friends to merely give an intellectual agreement to the claims of Christianity is not enough. You have to have personal encounter with God individually and directly. I am a sinner. Yes, Christ died for sinners. That's a fact. Maring sumangsang ayon kanyan, Christ died for sinners, but I am a sinner. And Christ died to save sinners. Well, I am a sinner, so Christ died to save me. The blood of Jesus Christ is able to cleanse sinners. Well, I am a sinner. And I want to be cleansed. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, Those who come to me, I will never cast out. Well, I will come to Christ. And He will not cast me out. So it's not only an intellectual agreement, but there is this personal dealing and personal involvement. And what's next? Of course, there is this conviction of sin. Kinanvict ng Panginoon si Saulo sa kasalanan. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Kala ni Pablo na ang kanyang pinersecute ay ang Christians or ang Christianity. But he was actually persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So first, na-realize ni Pablo na kilala siya ng Diyos. Tinawag siya personalist pangalan eh. Saul, Saul. So it dawns on the Apostle Paul that the Lord personally knew him. And my dear friends, this is what also what I will say to you. The Lord knows you personally. The Lord knows you personally. He calls you by name. Now, have you had such kind of meeting with God, my dear friends? Saul discovered that God knew him personally and that he knew all about his life, all about his actions. Now, ang, ang tendency kasi sa mga tao is clever tayo na lukuhin natin yung iba eh. Clever tayong nagpapalusot. Clever tayong nagfufool sa iba. Or minsan, ang ating nararamdaman, ang ating saluubin ay ikinukubli natin sa ating smile at sa ating mga mukha. But we can never do the same with God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Please turn there. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Ang sabi ni Apostle, uh, whoever wrote Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. At walang nilalang na nakukubli sa harapan niya kundi ang lahat ng mga bagay ay hubad at hayag sa mga mata niya na ating pagsusulitan. No man becomes a Christian without realizing that God knows all about him. Walang taong nagiging mananampalataya nang hindi na, na, naka-realize that God knows all about him. Ang sabi pa sa Psalm chapter 139, kahit saan daw tayo pumunta, ando ng Panginoon. Kahit sa pinaka-sikretong lugar, pinaka-liblib na lugar. It's a vital part of conversion, my dear friends. God knows every single detail of your life. There is nothing about you that is not known to God. At nilatag ng Panginoon ang lahat ng ginawa ni Saulo. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Conviction of my sin and the enormity of my sin. That's a vital part of one's con conversion. Conviction of my sin and conviction about the enormity of my sin. And suddenly, nakita ni Saulo ang ugliness ng kanyang kasalanan. To the point na sinabi niya, he was the chief of sinners. Suddenly, nakita ni Pablo, ni Saulo, Pablo, Saulo. Interchangeable yan kasi Saulo yung dating pangalan niya eh. Nakita ni Pablo ang wrongness ng kanyang mga ginagawa. Siya yung mayabang, self-satisfied, self-justifying Pharisee. Nakita niya finally sa Romans chapter 7 verse 18 that nothing good dwells in me. And I tell you my dear brethren, it's a necessity. Para sa isang tunay na conversion, it's a necessity. Nakikita mo ba ang tunay na kalagayan ng buhay mo? Has there been such a deep conviction about your sins? You violated the law of God. You violated the Ten Commandments. Naunawaan mo ba ang bad record mo in the sight of God? Na wala kang kapangyarihan na linisin yung bad record na yan? At ang Panginoon lamang, ang banal na dugo ni Jesus ang may kapangyarihan. So that was what happened to Saul. Suddenly, the wrongness, the ignorance, the arrogance ay pinakita ng Panginoon sa kanya. Why are you persecuting me? Now, akala ni Saul na pinersecute niya ang Christians pero si Jesus palang pinersecute niya. Ang ibig sabihin nito, ang nagpapabigat ng kasalanan. What makes sin, sin, is not so much that we are doing things that are wrong. What makes sin, sin, my dear brethren, is that we are doing things against God. Ang kasalanan ay naging kasalanan, hindi lamang dahil ginawa natin ang, ang masamang bagay, kundi ginawa natin ang mga bagay laban sa Diyos. Of 
course, nagkasala si David laban sa tao. He sinned against man. He sinned against, uh, sino yung pangalan ng husband ni Bathsheba? He sinned against Uriah. He murdered Uriah. That was a sin committed against man and against the nation as a whole. Yung hari ay expected na makipag and here David was at the rooftop of his palace at nagre-relax doon. It was against, against, a sin against the nation. Dahil sa pamamagitan ni David, ang bansang Israel ay hinatula ng Diyos. Pero noong si David ay nagsisi, ano ang sinabi ni David sa Psalm chapter 51? To you, or against you alone, O Lord, have I sinned. Against you. What makes sin sin is not so much that we are doing things that are wrong, but it's doing things that are against God. You can't be a Christian, my dear friends. Hindi ka pwedeng maging Christian ng walang conviction of sin. You are a Sabbath breaker. You are an immoral man. Your tongue is deceitful and liar. You are a jealous person. At ang conviction ng kasalanan is that you realize that you've wronged God. Higit sa lahat, you realize that you've wronged God. That you've raised up the assault against the Lord. You have not glorified God as you ought to. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 and 21. You have not given thanks to God as you ought to. You are a God-hating person. You are a God-denying person. You are a God-defying person. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Please turn there. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Anong sinasabi dito? Sapagkat ang kaisipan ng laman ay pagkapuot laban sa Diyos. Sapagkat hindi ito napapasakop sa kautusan ng Diyos ni hindi nga maaari. And then next, anong nangyari sa buhay ni Pablo sa kanyang conversion? He began to tremble. There was now this element of trembling. Lord, what do you want me to do? The great authority and Pharisee was now trembling. It's the unavoidable result, my dear friends. Kung naipakita ng Panginoon sa iyo ang kasalanan mo, if you have awakened to the fact that you are a sinner in the sight of God and you are in a dangerous plight because of your sin, then you begin to tremble. Walang taong ibigay niya ang kanyang tiwala sa isang tagapagligtas hanggang sa nakita niya ang kanyang sarili as a lost person. That you have been fighting against God, the absolute God, the eternal God. Now, ang tanong kaibigan, ikaw ba talaga ay kinanvict ng Panginoon dahil sa kasalanan mo? That you began to tremble. Have you ever been so concerned of yourself? Have you ever worried about yourself? There is judgment and any moment you will die. Katulad ng pastoral prayer ko kanina. It's a true story. Merong pinagpray tayo na, na yun nga ang nangyari. Bata pa. Now, have you ever trembled? Any moment? You will die any moment. Where will you go? What happens to you then? And that's the truth. You are getting older and older every day. Pinag-uusapan namin kanina, nung bata-bata pa tayo, kahit kulang-kulang tayo sa tulog, Dahil ang bahay ay hindi pa kinakalawang, hindi pa inaanay. Parang wala lang, hindi tinatablan. E ngayon po na ang edad natin ay pataas ng pataas na, hindi naman pababa ng pababa, pataas ng pataas. Ang, ang utak maaring ano, pababa ng pababa. Di ba, nagiging ulyanin na yung mga ano. Pero yung katawan natin, pataas ng pataas, paakyat ng paakyat, eh mahirap ng gamutin minsan kinakalawang na inaanay na. You're getting older every day. Now, have you been desperately concerned about it, my dear friends? Have you begun to tremble? 
This is inevitable if you realize this fact. Kasi kung hindi ka mag-tremble, hindi ka na bahala sa kasalanan mo, ibig sabihin, you have not realized that you are under the wrath of God. You have not realized that you are under the wrath of God. Next. Nung si Pablo ay na-converted, he now recognized him and submitted to him. Nagpapasakot na siya sa Panginoon. Lord, what do you want me to do? Sinurender na ni Pablo ang kanyang buhay kay Kristo. Na-realize niya that he's lost. Winakasan na niya ang lahat ng self-reliance. At tinanong na niya, isinuko na niya ang kanyang buhay sa Panginoon. Lord, what do you want me to do? Anong sagot ng Panginoon? Now, here is what I want you to do. So, believe in me. Acknowledge me. Repent of your sins. And entrust your soul to me. And then, anong sinabi ni Saul? Na naging Paul. At ano din ang sinasabi ng lahat ng mga niligtas ng Panginoon? Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. I am helpless. I cannot save myself. Just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood has cleansed me from all of my sins. And Saul became a mighty apostle the preacher and proclaimer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Si Saulo, yung willingly ignorant person. Mula sa pagiging willingly ignorant, he expressed his opinions about the Lord Jesus Christ, about Christianity, and then he was made to listen. He was confronted by the law of God. And God knows all about him. Now, ang tanong po, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, nangyari na ba ito sa buhay mo? Have you come to the point in your life wherein you became silent? Have you stopped and listened to the confrontation of God's Word? These are facts. Lahat, lahat ng niligtas ng Panginoon ay nangyayari ito sa kanilang buhay. Now, the business of the preacher is just to become a mouthpiece of Christ and of God. Hindi naman po natin pinabago ang mensahe ng Ibanghelyo. Now, this is my challenge for you, my dear friends. Stop a moment, think for a moment, and listen. Listen. Nakinig si Pablo at sinabi niya, Who are you, Lord? At sinabi ni Jesus, I am Jesus, the one that you are dismissing in your clever talk. I am the one that you are sinning against. Dumako na po tayo sa application, mga kapatid. Narinig mo na ba ang personal address ng Panginoon sa buhay mo? Nagkaroon ka na ba ng consciousness na kinausap ka ng Panginoon? Inilatag ng Panginoon ang tunay na kalagayan ng kaluluwa mo at sinabi ng Panginoon sa iyo, wala kang lusot dahil kilalang kilala kita. Well, my dear friends, kung hindi mo, kung hindi ka pa dinil ng Panginoon, kung hindi ka pa kinonfront ng Panginoon, or kung kinonfront ka, ay nagpabingi-bingihan ka, and you shrug it off, there will come a day when your name will be pronounced by this King of Kings and Lord of Lords that you have despised. There will come a day na marinig mo mula sa kanyang trono na tinatawag ng hari na ito ang pangalan mo. You will hear your name being called upon from that great white throne. Hindi ka makakatakas. God knows us one by one. And there will come a day if you do not take heed of the confrontation of God in your life right now, there will come a day when books will be opened. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15. In that book, it's all there. It's written there. And your name will be called up. No narinig mo bang tawag ng Panginoon sa buhay mo ngayon, kaibigan? If you do, do as what Saul said. 
Kasi kung maririnig mo ang confrontation ng Panginoon sa Judgment Day, wala ka nang magagawa. You can no longer say to God, Lord, what do you want me to do? Away to eternal damnation. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ will tell you. But right now, if you hear His voice, binasa natin kanina sa scripture reading, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. Do as what the Apostle Paul did. Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord will give you the same answer. Repent of your sins and believe in me. Entrust yourself to me. Surrender your life to me. Turn away from your sin and avail of the benefit of my blood. That's the same response that God will tell you. And God is really telling that to you right now, my dear friends. May God in His grace indeed arrest you, apprehend you, and call you this afternoon. Para sa mga kapatid natin sa iglesia, this is what evangelism is all about. To simply become a herald of God's call, of God's pronouncement against sinners. A herald of grace. That's why our radio program is called Herald of Grace Radio Ministries Philippines. We are heralding God's grace. Calling sinners to repent of their sins and believe in Jesus Christ. Now, are we politicians? Na hindi natin itatouch ang kasalanan ng mga tao, baka walang makikinig sa atin? Anong sinasabi ni Pablo? If I am trying to please men, then I have no right to preach the gospel. We shouldn't please men. But we should be faithful to the God who has given us the commission to proclaim His undiluted gospel. And I tell you, it's not because of the way we package the gospel. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit working while the gospel is proclaimed. Tayo po ay manalangin. Salamat po Panginoon sa hapong ito. Nihiling po namin na katulad ni Apostle Paul, kausapin niyo rin ang mga kaibigan namin na wala pa sa inyo. Confront them also, O oh God. Apprehend them personally. Call their name personally, individually. In your saving call, O oh God, let them tremble. Let them be confronted because of their sin against you. And let them avail of the blood of Jesus. Let them surrender their lives unto you. Let them call upon the name of the Lord and you shall save them and you shall rescue them because that is what you promised, O God. Salamat po. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.